Welcome back to The Deep Dive. Today our mission is uh, a deep freeze. We're looking at the late December 2025 event, Winter Storm Ezra, and what came after it. Right, the Continental Arctic Blast. Exactly. We're going to get right into the atmospheric mechanics behind this, you know, this massive disruption. And we should start at the very beginning, with the storm's birth. There's this concept called explosive cyclogenesis. The bomb cyclone. That's the one. And Ezra wasn't just some big storm. It, uh... It officially met the criteria. Yeah. Its central pressure just plummeted. By how much? At least 24 millibars in 24 hours. By December 29th, the pressure was down near, I think, 975 millibars. Okay, so 975 millibar, that's a number, but yeah. I mean, what does that actually feel like? For people on the ground, what does that pressure drop mean? It means incredible wind speeds. Yeah. And just uh, rapid, rapid intensification. That plummeting pressure is exactly why the storm became this engine that, you know, wrecked holiday travel for tens of millions. Okay, so that's the engine. Let's talk about the fuel. What was the uh, the atmospheric cocktail here? It was a classic clash, but just, you know, dialed up to 11. Oh. You had this unseasonably warm, moist air coming up from the Gulf. And it slammed right into what? Into a migrating lobe of the polar vortex pushing south. <laughs> and the storm's rapid deepening that was all fueled by latent heat release. As that moisture turned into rain and snow, it released enormous energy. Making the storm stronger, faster. Exactly. So that explains the snow and the wind. But the cold, what was the driver that pushed that historic bone-chilling cold so far south? For that, we have to look way up, about 20 miles up, actually. The ultimate cause was a big disruption, a split of the polar vortex. And this was after something called a sudden stratospheric warming event, an SSW. Yes. And that's the counterintuitive part, isn't it? Hold on. So a warming event way up in the stratosphere caused this extreme cold down here at the surface. It sounds strange, I know. But basically, an SSW warms the air high above the Arctic. That makes the jet stream wobble and weaken. And you couple that with what's called a negative Arctic oscillation. Yeah. Which is just a pressure pattern that favors a weak jet stream. Yeah. And, well, you get the perfect channel. The Polar Express, as they call it. That's it. It just lets that dense, frigid Arctic air spill straight south into the mid-latitudes. And the result was that staggering temperature plunge. We saw some places drop 30, even 40 degrees Fahrenheit in just a few hours. Like in St. Louis. Right. St. Louis, Missouri hit 71 degrees on a Sunday, and then by Monday it's in the 20s. That's a 51-degree flip. It's wild. And that abrupt change is really the signature here. This was a multi-hazard event. It wasn't just one kind of problem. And that's what made it so different. So you had the blizzard zone up in the upper Midwest, Marquette, Michigan, bracing for what? Up to 36 inches of snow. And wind gusts up to 75 miles per hour, complete whiteout conditions. Then you move east and you get the icing zone. Hmm. Central Pennsylvania, interior New England. Yeah. The threat there was totally different. It was ice. <laughs> up to half an inch of ice accretion, which is just devastating for power lines. And then there's the weirdest part, the warm anomaly. Right. On the southern flank, you had Dallas hitting 79 degrees just before the front arrived. It's that strange juxtaposition that caused so much trouble. That brief warmth then the deep freeze, that's what led to, what, over 2,700 flight cancellations? Right in the holiday rush, too. Yeah. And the danger was immediate. I mean, wind chills down to negative 50 Fahrenheit in North Dakota. Wow. At those temperatures, you can get frostbite on exposed skin in less than 10 minutes. So where do we go from here? Is this pattern breaking down soon? Not right away, no. Hmm? The models show it's pretty persistent. There's even a secondary surge of Arctic air forecast to come down around the new year. So more cold and maybe more snow for the Great Lakes and Northeast? It's a slight risk, but yes. So to sum this all up, the December 2025 event was really the stark illustration of atmospheric volatility. The mechanics of Ezra just opened the door for this massive Arctic invasion. It was a perfect storm of events, and it leaves you with a really important question to think about. Which is... Well, if a warming event, that sudden stratospheric warming 20 miles above the Arctic, can cause such extreme cold and disruption thousands of miles away, what did that really tell us about how deeply interconnected Earth's entire atmosphere is?